Hi, I'm Henry Lopez, and you're watching Play Unplugged TV. We talked a lot about the sound, which is great. Um, with the, you, you know, you'd mentioned with the with the change moving over to your own system. Can you just do give us a, just a couple brief examples of things that illustrate like what the new mechanics are like, or something that you think is really special about the new mechanics? Sure. Uh, well, let me tell you the very very base mechanic. The base mechanic are two d10 plus an attribute die, which can be a variable, anywhere from a d4 to a I actually can go up scale up to whatever. Uh, D10, D20, whatever. Um, rolled, added together with whatever ranks you may have in a skill uh, to meet or, or beat a target number. That's the basics. It's very simple. However, what I think uh, expands upon that is the fact that our system is completely open. There are no classes. You can create whatever character you pretty much want and you're only limited by two things. Your imagination and the tropes of the world. Uh, for example, we don't have half-elves or hobbits in our in Arcanus. Therefore, we don't have rules to create those those people. Mm -hmm. However, barring that, uh, you can just create a, uh, just about anything. Uh, if you want to have a thief uh, type character who worships the god of, you know, Kadic, the god of assassins and whatnot, mm -hmm. and you want to be able to cast a couple of divine spells, you can create a character like that. You want to be a straight warrior that's, that just, you know, uh, masters every weapon, you can do that. I've and got to say, a gladiator, like, I love gladiators' imagery and all that stuff, and that's, man, it sounds really tempting. <laughs> well, what's nice about the gladiator thing is that we've uh, managed to to build things so that if you want to play the, the type of man uh, or the type of a uh, warrior who only fights with cestus, those gloves with the, the spikes on them, yeah. you're as capable as a guy swinging a sword. Now, obviously, you're not going to do as many hits, uh, as much damage on one hit, mm -hmm. but because of the the uniqueness of our clock system, which I'll get into in a second, you can hit more often than the guy swinging that great sword. So your cumulative damage should be equal to the same, to the, the guy swinging that, that great sword. That sounds really cool. All right, let's go into it. Okay, the clock. All right, one of the things that we wanted to make sure is that combat did not bog down. We wanted it to be fast. We wanted it to be fluid. We wanted to have people, you know, get their head into the game and not, you know, go, oh, it's, it's, it's Frank's turn. Let me go make coffee because it's going to take forever. Okay? So we have the clock. And we actually have an accessory that's like a clock, although that's not necessary. You can use a piece of paper, a D12. Mm -hmm. We made the accessory because I was forever picking up that D12 and rolling it and losing my place. So, so we created this clock thing. Um, you roll initiative once, and you roll initiative to place yourself on the clock, okay? And your initiative can be anywhere from 1 to 10, basically. You just roll D10. The lower, the better. And that's it. You never roll initiative again because the clock moves based upon your actions, Okay, so let's say you roll fantastic and you roll a one, so you go first, right? The GM says, "Okay, one, Rico, what are you going to do?" Uh, are you gonna imagining that I'm the Cestus Gladiator, I think I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to punch my enemy. My, I'm going to punch one of these infernals. Right. And he's right in front of you. All right, so uh, let's say that you're, you're, uh, well, you go ahead and you roll your attack, you do your damage, and on your character sheet you'll have a speed for that action. You know, the use of Cestus. Let's say it's a two. So you move your clock, you do your damage or whatever, and when you're done, the last thing you do is you move your clock from one to three, right? You add two, bam. So then we go two, nobody rolled a two, so three, Enrico, you go again. I think I see where this is going. So I'm assuming that that person wielding that great sword, because of the heft of the weapon and what they're planning on doing with it, uh, I'll be able to throw a couple punches at them before they ever get a chance to swing at me. Exactly. Even if that, that person with the great sword had rolled a one as well as you, okay, his recovery after taking that, that sword swing, maybe a five, which means you'll go on six. Now, if you have a speed of two, you're going to be able to go on three, you're going to be able to go on five, and then you're going to be able to go on seven. Now, he'll take another swing before you have that third swing, but it all evens out. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we've done, uh, the nice thing about this, this is that we had the, uh, the resources of the uh, Arcanus uh, players from the Living Arcanus, which is now called Legends of Arcanus, mm -hmm. which is our living campaign. So we went through a, a beta if you will, where thousands of players uh, ran through the system. Mm -hmm. And we, th we were very, very open. We had uh, players, uh, not only individual playtest groups from the United States, Canada, Australia even. We have a very large contingent of very uh, fervent fans in Australia, believe it or not. And uh, they're great guys. They're, they're fantastic. I love those guys. And uh, they, uh, they all uh, playtested it, plus just the usual you know, um, grind of, of the campaign, mm -hmm. playtesting. And we distilled that into the final product. 
So we made sure that the math works. There shouldn't be, actually the biggest complaint that I've had, besides the fact that there's too many options, is uh, I have this one guy goes. That's a good complaint. Exactly, I love that complaint. Uh, one of my, uh, my dear friends said, I don't understand this character creation, which translates to, I don't know how to break this yet. Wow. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to, how to tweak this to, to get that edge. So it's, it's, it's fantastic. We, I'm very proud of um, Eric Weiner and uh, Peter Patanachea, who are my two business partners who uh, really worked on the nuts and bolts. Uh, in earnest. I mean, we all contributed, but they really did the uh, the heavy lifting. They did a great job. It sounds like the mechanics are really tight. I, I especially, like I said, th this clock system sounds really cool. I, I like that things happen at different speeds. It, I think it's more reflective of what uh, what an actual combat would be like. I agree. Because the, spe the, the clock also works with spells. Mm -hmm. It works with uh, using your skill during combat. Obviously, if you're out of combat, who cares? Right. We have a, uh, a, a philosophy. Actually, the book is littered with these little quotes. And uh, the, the little box says, it says, you know, uh, Eric says, or Henry says, or Peter says, uh, things like if, if you're in a situation where there's no immediate danger mm -hmm. and you have virtually unlimited uh, number of tests or opportunities to make a test, mm -hmm. why roll? Okay, if you're going to pick a lock, why, I mean, if there's no, if there's finding go down, he's got to pick the lock in 30 seconds, great. Okay, but if not, don't even roll. He picks a lock. Keep going. You know, don't bog down the adventure you know keep it going keep it rolling keep it going fast i i completely agree i completely agree with that philosophy and i think it's stream i think it streamlines things and keeps people into the actual role playing and furthering the story versus sitting around and just you know rolling dice aimlessly exactly i agree uh another thing that, that's uh, very different is the uh, magic system um besides the fact that we we broke apart and differentiated the different types of magic and what differentiates arcane magic from divine magic. Uh, there's a saying in, in Arcanus which is one follows the will of the gods and the other one usurps the will of the gods. Uh, which means that the, the divine uh, or the priests, holy gems or whatnot, follow a rote system. So their wall of flame is always yay long by yay big and does that, this much damage and that's it. They, can, they have very very little uh, ability to manipulate it because of course they're following the gods told them how to make this wall and who are they to, to change to change that, whereas sorcerers channel the channel the the oh magic first of all in Arcanus is basically the residual energy from the Big Bang, from creation. So when you know when the the gods said you know let there be light and boom, creation was made, that residual energy is still filtering through the world, uh, through the universe. And sorcerers and even divine users and whatnot basically tap into that little bit of, of energy that's left over and channel it. And the sorcerers are, are actually take that and manipulate it with their will. So they're able to, there's, um, there's things called adaptation. Every spell has an adaptation. It's not a feat or a talent or anything else. It's, a, it's part of the spell. It adds to your, to your casting TN. So you put too many adaptation, it could be beyond your, your ability to do so, and you may fail. Mm -hmm. But you can do that, and it's, and it's, it's scalable with, uh, with uh, the character. So I can make that wall of flame more, you know, do more damage, but it may not be as wide, it may be shorter, it may be longer, you know, whatever. So mm -hmm. sorcerers have more manipulation, but it's harder for them to do it. Whereas a priest, since they follow rote, it's easier for them to cast a spell, but they have less chance of manipulating it. Sounds really cool, and that that is quite unique. I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever heard of a system do working like that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of systems out there, so I never like to say we're the only right. ones, but I have never heard of it either. Another thing that we do is we can you can uh, combine spells. You can combine basic spells, two spells, to make a third effect, which is uh, something that the higher tiers players are able to do as well. That sounds awesome. So. Um, we're coming to a close, but what are some things that are, uh, wh what's what's new on the horizon for Arcanus? What are some other things? That, I mean, obviously, with the book just being released, boom, really exciting and a lot of stuff to delve into. But at the same time, I'm sure there are some things coming up that you're also going to want to, you, you'll want to mention. So what's what's coming up for Arcanus for us to get excited about beyond the beyond the core book? Well, let me tell you what's, what's out right now, okay. beyond the core book. The core book, like you said, is this huge, full-color, 448-page monstrosity. It's, it can actually be... Uh, uh, considered a weapon in certain states. <laughs> but beyond that, we have a uh, small supplement, a uh, 32-page supplement, supplement called Forge of Magic, which is out right now. It came out with a book. It's, uh, it, it adds uh, rune magic uh, to it, plus uh, magic items. So we have that. For Gen Con, we're hoping to have a, a small bestiary, the Arcanist bestiary out, uh, which is a, will be about a 48-page uh, bestiary. It won't be a full-blown monster manual yet. Uh, but we want something to tide uh, players over for home campaigns. So between mm -hmm. the monsters are in the core book plus the bestiary, they should have plenty to plenty of fodder there. 
Uh, beyond that, we have uh, an adventure coming out, uh, which we don't have a title yet, but it uh, takes place in the Blessed Lands, if, if people are familiar with, with Arcanus. Um, but uh, we'll have an adventure. Uh, further down the line, we have the Chronicler's Guide, which is kind of like a DM's Guide, mm -hmm. and the Hero's, uh, Hero's Guide, which is kind of like a Player's Guide. And the two are actually uh, twin products. They mirror each other. Uh, one for the game masters, you'll have organizations that are on the evil side mm -hmm. or the bad guy side, whereas for the hero side, you'll have organizations for the heroes to join and whatnot. That sounds really cool. Um, in closing, where if I want to find out more information on Arcanus, where can where can the viewers at home find? I, I'm, now I'm really interested. Where can I find more information? Well, then go to my uh, uh, main website, which is www.paradigm p a r a d i g m concepts c o n c e p t s all one word uh, dot com or www.legendsofarcanus.com. And there'll be tons of information there. Oh, uh, that reminds me of one last thing. Because of the campaign that we have, uh, we release lots of adventures for, co uh, for conventions. Those uh, adventures that we release for conventions are then later made available t for home play. So uh, like I said, in Living Arcanus, we released 125 or so adventures for the player base mm -hmm. for free. Right now, we have about eight to nine adventures on the website for free that you can download. Now these are full-blown adventures written for a four-hour slot, but they have uh, full maps, stats, stories, box text, you know, whatnot, like a normal adventure, but it's a PDF. Well, the only thing it doesn't have, it, I guess, is art and a cover, but it's a small PDF. It's totally free, uh, free of charge, and every month or so, we like to release one or two more. So as, as time passes, the, uh, the, the adventure uh, goodie bag will continue to grow. That's awesome. So I guess somebody diving into Arcanus can already come go right on the website and be like, "All right, here I got, here I've go. got my adventure content. I can go right into it." Exactly. That's a, that's incredible. What a nice thing to do. That's awesome. No, it really is. Um, and right, and I, I assume right now people can start looking for Arcanus at their all at their local game store also. Well, the the book was just released at Origins. It's uh, at our distrib at uh, the distributors right now, and I believe it will be released uh, early in July. Uh, there's a holiday weekend with the 4th of July and whatnot, so they don't like to release that at that point. But it'll release, uh, I believe, the week after that. So they should be looking for it, for it in their game stores um, mid-July, end of July, around there, but no later than that. That sounds great. Henry, wonderful interview. I've learned a lot about Arcanus, and it sounds super exciting. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to allow me to, to uh, tell people about Arcanus because it, it's been... Uh, a big part of my life for, for what, almost a dozen years, and I, I foresee it being a, a big part of my life for another dozen at least. Right. Thank you again. Thank you very much.